Welcome to Wednesday Live Coffee Talk. I'm Michelle Kui. I'm a confidence and leadership coach, and I work with negative self-talkers to get them to believe the talents and strength that they have in both personal and professional life. And this is a show about love, courage, and connection. Today, it's a great honor to have my old friend back to the show. Um, I've known Roland since the very beginning of my coaching journey, and he's been very supportive. He show up to my group all the time, and you know I learned so much of of the skills that he has, his wisdom, and his he's a very joyful, um, happy person. So I've learned so much from him personally, um, just by him showing up to my group. So today I want to bring him back because Roland considered himself as a complex human being, which we all are. Um, so just like his clients, he, he continues to learn that we often only reveal a small part of who we are. And Roland is constantly learning. There's not a single moment every time Roland comes to my group, there's a lot of discussion that's going on uh, within the group that talk about exploring new things. Roland Legg is a lifelong learner. He has been involved in the life and work um, of the United Church of Canada, serving in congregation, various committees, and community organizations since 1991. These organizations focus on HIV, AIDS, education, and prevention, community development, the prevention of domestic violence, youth opportunity, and suicide prevention. In recent years, he studied the psychological and spiritual modality called the Enneagram through the Enneagram Institute, one of the most respected Enneagram school in the world and the Deep Coaching Institute. So I don't want to go too much of um, his uh, professional uh, biography I want to bring him onto the screen so that he can tell you his own journey and what inspired him to become a coach. So welcome, Roland Legg. Hi, Roland. Thanks, Michelle. What a great introduction. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've learned so much from you just with our interactions, with our you know, monthly group that we've been involved. And, and every time you show up, it, it gives me a different perspective, perspective, even though, you know, you're the one who's asking questions, but it kind of led me to think about, oh, you know, I never thought about in, in a different perspective. And you gave me a lot of feedback and it was a beta group and it led to something amazing. You inspire me all the time <laughs> with all the stuff that you do with the tips that you share. So I really appreciate it. But today, today it's about you. I, I, I believe, you know, our listener can really um, use some tool right now because a lot of us are in a place where we're kind of lost, we're, we're in that transition, we don't know, we thought we knew who we are, but it turns out this is a different picture. Um, so I'm sure there's a lot of people out there trying to discover who they are or getting wanting to know who they are. So tell us a little bit about who you are. Thanks, Michelle. Um, I, uh, as I, as Michelle shared in my introduction, um, I spent a good chunk of my life as a minister in the United Church, and I, I still am, but it's not my uh, primary place of work. Uh, around 10, 11 years ago, um, I just was at a place in my life where I thought there was something missing, and I wasn't quite sure, and just I uh, was on a trip to uh, the United Kingdom, not sleeping very well, got up that next morning and knew what it was. And um, Senior Graham, a good friend of mine and a coach, um, has encouraged me on this journey. And um, what drew me, well, first to coaching is that I just love to help people. It, just, it gives me immense pleasure helping people to discover their own strengths, their own skills. And um, I also fell in love with the Enneagram. And the reason I fell in love with the Enneagram was it suddenly helped me to understand who I am, why I behave the way I do. Um, I have a lot of anxiety and it, I've just, it's come up again with COVID happening. And uh, so, but I discovered my type, I'm type six and type sixes have issues with um, 
with uh, anxiety because we we don't trust our inner wisdom. But I'm discovering to find the strength of the six, which is courage. So what I love about it is that it it's a, a, a it's more, it's more of a teaching, um, but it helps you to become present. That's what really the Enneagram is about. Yeah, you can learn all the different types and annoy people at parties, but really that's kind of useless. But the Enneagram helps you to get in touch with your um, three centers of wisdom. So you get, you learn through your body, your sensations, you learn through your emotions, and you learn through a quiet mind. So the Enneagram is there to help you get rid of all the uh, lies you tell about yourself, the narrative you tell about yourself that is a lie, and sort of reclaim who you're really meant to be. And the Enneagram gives you tools, gives you um, suggestions of things that help you to get healthier. Mm -hmm. And it's all about being gentle with yourself. It's about encouraging yourself. And it's about just showing up each day and being your best. Um, I still got so much to learn. I still beat myself up. But I'm, I think I'm getting, gradually, I'm, I'm getting better with it. So I trained through the Deep Coaching Institute, which is one of the few schools that uses the Enneagram as its primary tool for coaching. Uh, it's a, what I call a presence-based model of coaching. So it's um, what my experience has been. I've, I've gone for all sorts of types of counseling. I'm not ashamed to say that. I think it's a sign of strength that we get help. But the thing with this, this method is it helps me to get in touch with my sensations, my emotions. Because my tendency is I'm a head type. I get stuck in my head. And the amazing thing is, it's, it's, it's hard, but it's still very simple. One way to release any of those unwanted sensations, those, those feeling out of control, fear, is just to find a safe place where you can feel those. And you don't even have to understand. I love to understand it. But all I need to do is allow myself to feel it. So as a coach, I'm there to create this really safe environment for you to deal with these feelings. So really feel, experience those sensations, to really feel those emotions, and to learn to quiet your mind. And so and that my so far, it's a, it's a long process for getting a business. Never thought I would do this in my middle 50s, but it's uh, when I get to coach people, it's such an honor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I love everything you share about, you know, getting to know our emotions and getting to know our feelings, because I think be, being able to feel can be quite scary sometimes you know mm -hmm. i i actually have to sit with my feelings and understand them and going through them even though that feeling may appear to be anxiety something that's very uncomfortable and um i always hesitate to encourage people who are experiencing anxiety that's let's talk about that feeling and, and and you you know experience that feeling that that is a very um scary thing for someone who's going through that anxiety to feel um they want to avoid that feelings altogether and and there's it's perfectly normal to to feel that way because it's not comfortable for them so i kind of wanted to go back a little bit before you became a coach what who what were you like what who who is roland leg um were you were you more serious you know because i imagine someone who is in ministry who's you know behind the podium who's talking and preaching and were you serious or were you um, more an open hearted person? How would you describe yourself? Well, I think a lot of it depended on my state of well being. But when I'm when I'm healthy, when I am feeling secure, when I'm feeling confident, I have a, a natural sense of humor. I can people tell me I'm very funny and my wife laughs at my jokes, which are pretty bad, but she seems to like them. So I think more of my sense of humor was more um, related to my state of health at the time, mental health, physical health. Uh, I guess I would say what I've, um, over time, I've just gotten much more self-confident. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe I'm a little less serious. I mean, I still can go into those overly serious places, but I think I'm, I think my sense of humor has, increased um 
big thing for me is I become much more of a risk taker. Um, and if you learn anything about the Enneagram, type six loyalists, we, we like to have, when we're stressed out, we like to have everything as secure as possible. I mean, we, we want to prevent any troubles from happening way before they happen. And we probably have plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G in case something happens. The trouble is, is when I get worrying about things that are never going to happen. And then that can be very suffocating because then I just get stuck in this, this place of this fearfulness. So I said, as I continue to grow, I mean, I think I've been finding my courage. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, right now, just the last few weeks with COVID, yeah, I've felt a lot of angst, angst, anxiousness. And uh, so it doesn't mean it just completely goes away. I'm just able to catch myself much sooner than I used to before and then find a way through it. And I just know I'm not going crazy now. It may feel like you're going crazy, but I know I'm not going crazy. So um, probably best to ask my wife, but she just said that she's noticed that I'm just more, I'm more comfortable in my own skin. Mm-hmm. I'm happier. I'm energized. And yeah, I still have those down times, but it's just overall, it's uh, I think I'm a much healthier person. And I get parts I'm doing in coaching are the things I probably love the most in ministry, which they're, they're different, but not completely. I would Kate pastoral care with coaching. Now they're different. Um, and coaching allows me to work with just about anybody. I, I don't care what, what your belief systems are. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter to me whether you're Christian, Buddhist, Baha'i, Hindu, Muslim, agnostic, atheist. I'm more about finding that in the Enneagram world, we call it essence. Mm-hmm. And sort of that, that's, that spiritual part, that sort of that part that says who we truly are and uh, helping people and just using la- appropriate language that is comfortable for the person I'm working with. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think if you can work on this at a spiritual level, that's great, but we don't have to. What, what made you finally decide that, you know, ministry is not something that you wanted to do, but rather, you know, coaching is what you, where your heart is. What made you decide to do that? Well, it, it was a mixture of, um, I mean, there's still lots of things I love about ministry, but the, the state of the, um, the church right now is at least um, in, in Canada, the United Church was the coming together of Presbyterians, Methodists, and congregationalist. And um, the church is, is like a lot of the mainline churches all around North America and Europe. They're going down in attendance. Uh, there's lots of churches closing. So part of it was I didn't have a secure job for the rest of my life. Um, there were some churches, there's some healthy churches, but there's some that are just trying barely to keep the doors open and appease everybody. So I think I just lost my um, excitement for ministry, um, a congregational ministry. Now, in my mind, coaching what I'm doing is a ministry, but it's much, much broader because I can work with, with anybody and um, I just work with whatever belief and values that a person brings to, to the coaching. Mm-hmm. I, I think one of the difference that I can I can see between ministry and coaching is that coaching you really don't have any agenda, and I know you are you are um, ICF um, certified, so there's there's really um, specific criteria that you have to meet in order to provide the service. And, and that include not having that agenda for the client. So right. coaching to me, it sounds like it's not, it's not something that's really confined. You don't walk in with the agenda. Whereas ministry, you know, being a minister, it's about preaching. <laughs> I don't mm-hmm. have any better word than preaching. It's about preaching, right? Here are the set of values and here are the standard and the way of thinking under one premise or one or under one uh, uh, biblical construct and here you are this is how we operate under that construct but you, you and I know that it doesn't sometimes we go 
our life will travel out of the path so that we can redirect ourselves coming um coming back into that fixed country, yeah, that yeah. bigger scheme of life yeah I mean, the United Church is a fairly uh, one of the more liberal churches in Canada. So I would say a lot of the pastoral care I would do really was I was journeying with people. They it was self-directed. So there there was a lot more similarity. Um, but yeah, it's different. I mean, I'm I'm focusing on this on the thing I love, and I feel that's where my strengths are and my gifts are is in the is in the coaching. And I think the world needs coaches at the moment. Yeah. For sure. Did you always knew that this is your passion? Like, how did you, how did you, how did you land it on coaching? Like, there's so many different professions, right? Why coaching? Well, it was a gradual, because at the beginning, I never thought of being a coach. My, my friend, Brian, um, he's been, he, he sort of, same journey, but he's encouraged me on that same, same path. So it was more of a, I, I learned more and more about the Enneagram and it was, it changed my life. It really changed my life. Um, just finding out more about myself and learning to love myself with all my peculiarities and strangeness and weird things happening. So it was learning, it was learning that and accepting myself, mm -hmm. but also it was um, just me losing my train of thought here. Um, why are you coaching? Um, thank you. Um, <laughs> so it was eventually, what, what do I do with this Enneagram? Because uh, there was, I could do some of it in the church, but there were a lot of people that weren't open to it in the church. And um, my friend said, well, why you should go to the Deep Coaching Institute. And, um, and said, well, maybe I could become a coach. So that was a way that I could actually use the Enneagram and actually make, make money. Um, but more so it was, it, it was a, a great way to use it as a tool to help people define, um, to find inner peace, to find their, their purpose in, in this world, to help them find a way through the craziness of life. And, um, and I just felt thinking of what I was doing in ministry, it was the thing I, the part ministry, I think I had the greatest gift, the greatest skill in. Um, and the more I learned about coaching and the methodology they use at the Deep Coaching Institute, it just, it just felt right. Mm -hmm. And, and it, because I had experienced this form of coaching, I knew it worked. I'm not saying it works for everybody. So there's so many different types of people and we all need different things. But for me, it made such a difference in my life. Um, so it was just this um, gradual pull towards coaching. And the more I understood, the more I learned about coaching, the more I learned to be a coach, it just felt more and more, yeah, this is for me. It just feels right. Yeah. Yeah. As we're describing the, this amazing tool, the Enneagram, so perhaps there's a lot of people who aren't familiar with Enneagram. And, and to be honest, you know, I didn't know what Enneagram is until after I connected with you, I start reading more books and literature about the Enneagram that I got more familiar with Enneagram. And it's a great tool, great assessment. Personally, I took it. Um, I had a session with Roland because uh, we were just kind of exchanging our, our tools that's in our toolbox. So I remember setting up a session with Roland and he gave me an assessment of the Enneagram. And it was very interesting how there's a lot of overlap of what Enneagram mm -hmm. is and what energy leadership is. There's a lot of overlap um, uh, similarity between the two. So for those who are not familiar with Enneagram, can you tell us a little bit about how, what, what, is, what is it? And you mentioned type six, what are the types? Well, the Enneagram is the actual symbol is dates back hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, it's, sort of, it's sort of the modern Enneagram movement sort of started in the 1700s. And the beginning, it was uh, it really wasn't a personality tool. It was a, a it was a way to connect with your spirits. So this fellow named Gurdjieff created these nine different dances to get you connected with who you truly are. So it was a very spiritual tool. But then I'll, we don't have much time to, to describe the history. But move fast forward to the 1960s in California. Of course, all sorts of nifty things start in California. 
people started getting hold of the Enneagram and started seeing the connections between psychology and the Enneagram. It's, it's, then it sort of turned into this part of it was a personality typology. Um, so then it just it just kept on growing. I mean, now if you can find piles of Facebook groups, you can you'll see videos and all sorts of information out there about the Enneagram. It's just gaining popularity around the world. I just want to say a, a warning. It's like anything. There's people out there that really don't know what they're talking about. And I call it Enia bashing. Um, there's, there are people that use it as a weapon and it's not meant to be a weapon. So I'll just say there are nine different types. Um, there's no perfect way to take, find out what type you are. There's different assessments you can take, read books, take courses. Don't rush into figuring out who you are. Take your time. Don't let anyone tell you who you are. You're the only one that can tell you yourself who you are. You might think you're a type and then later on you'll think, no, I'm actually another type. Um, so there's, there's, it's, it can be divided into different ways, but there's the, uh, the body types. So that's the eight, which is the challenger, the nine, that's the peacemaker, the one that's the reformer, the heart center is types are two, the helper, three, the achiever, four, the um, individualist. And then there's the head types, which is the five is the investigator, the six is the loyalist, the seven is the enthusiast. You can also divide them by um, groups that are um, uh, um, the withdrawn types, which is the four, um, four, five, and nine. There's the um, assertive types, which are the three, seven, and eight. And there's the dutiful types, which are the one, two, and six. So there's different ways of looking at it, but essentially your type shows you where you're already stuck. So the intention is to get you out of your box. It's not to put you into a box, it's to get you out of the box. And then your job is to get as healthy as you can in that particular type. And the healthier you get in your type, will you get healthier in all nine types? Mm. I mean, because that's, I mean, we all have all nine of us, nine in us, but usually there's some that we're very strong in. There's one that we tend to go to um, under stress. And then there's maybe a few we're very weak in. So you want to get as strong in as all the nine types as, as possible. Mm -hmm. This, this is a very abbreviated version of the Enneagram. Uh, the other day, Roland actually did a, a whole presentation for us in our group. And, and it was it was just absolutely amazing. And he had to um, cut it short a lot of times because it's so complex, it's so complicated. And here's the thing that, you know, I don't know about uh, about you, my, my viewer, my audience, but, you know, personally, if there's something, if my pipe broke, <laughs> if my pipe broke, I'm going to go out and look for a plumber to fix my pipe. Right. I don't I don't intentionally wanted to get my toolbox and go there and then start fixing my pipe. And same thing with life. A lot of time I feel I feel, you know, if I don't know something, I'm going to go out there and ask someone who is an expert in the area and get them to work it for me, because there's I, I shouldn't have to expect myself to be able to do everything. Um, so this is how I see tools like Enneagram, like energy leadership. It's about, you know, things that we don't know about ourselves and that things that we are stuck on, but someone else has the tool. Someone else has the ability to help us unstuck. So why not reach out to that person and get them to unstuck us or fix our broken pipe? Yeah. <laughs> do you feel that way? Yeah, I do. And I think it's also when you're feeling like you want change in your life, mm -hmm. um, try different ones. You no, know, you might meet Michelle and think, yep, she's the one for me. You might meet Roland and think he's the one for me. Um, there's different tools and you just need to find what works for you. Mm -hmm. Because I know not one, I know the Enneagram isn't for everybody, um, but I want to share it because I'm passionate about it. And if you love it, please join me. And the same with Michelle. If you love what she's offering, go with Michelle because um, that's why we have different different tools out there, modalities, teachings, whatever you want to call them. 
because we all need different things. Right. And um, we all, I think, are, we also have, there's certain people we connect more with than others. So, yeah. Yeah. What, who, who are your typical client? Who, who comes to you? Um, I would say um, I've had people that, um, I think it's, it's a lot of it's personal work. Um, it's um, purpose, finding people's purpose. Um, it's getting unstuck from like maybe they've, um, they, they just feel like there's something missing in their life and they don't quite know, or this just seems too scary for them to try anything different. So, um, so someone may just, you know, want to, I'm just not feeling good about my life. Um, but I know there's other things for me to do, but I just can't get myself to do it. So I need someone to help me to unlock that and to find that passion and to find my courage to do it. Um, I had another person that both personally and professionally, um, just being the best investor, in, um, this person happens to work helping people with their investments. Um, just, you know, about how does she talk, convey her message to her clients? Um, how does she work best in this institution, this company? Um, no, so she'll come up with a, a roadblock and think just, she'll come say, I, I need to work on this. I mean, just recently, this person was just talking about, um, um, they just wanted some tools to help people. They were wanting to go too fast into the investment information and they just needed to slow down and be able to build that relationship first. So we just did some work on helping this person to do the what we might call a small talk, but really the very important talk about at the beginning of building that trust and that relationship with that client. Yeah. And um, I've also done work um, with couples before they get married. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly offer it if anybody in any form of relationship, whether it's marriage or in Canada, we call it common law or the Enneagram is a great tool to help couples communicate. And it doesn't matter whether you're grace gay, straight, bisexual, transgender, works with everybody, so. Yeah, so, sounds like you're working with a variety of clients and, and it's really, you know, it encompasses our lives. Like these tools are supposed to help us in moving and navigating through life with mm -hmm. better better way of navigating through life. I mean, you know, it doesn't, maybe it doesn't have to be all pretty and, and, and luxury life, but at least it's somewhere better, better life with these tools and that is a whole purpose of having these tools mm -hmm. so yeah where, where can people find you if they are looking for you well the best place probably is if it would be to google rel consultants and my website is www.relconsultants.com and um um, just invite you to take a look what I offer if you're interested in in learning more um, set up a, dis a discovery call with me um, there's some articles on my website that sort of introduce you to the Enneagram um, I do have an uh, online assessment which is it's really just to get you thinking about what type you may be it's not a scientific thing but it's uh, it may give you a clue of what type you may be and um, do you want to talk about the Enneagram? I'm always gung-ho and excited to talk to you about the Enneagram and, and share with you how it's changed my life and invite you to consider that maybe this could help you find greater purpose, joy, meaning, hope in this, in this life. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, De definitely check out Roland. And, you know, I, I always, I can only relate it back to my personal journey, right? And when I was feeling stuck, I remember during that period of time, I was doing a lot of online assessment. I was taking a lot of tests out there to, to really um, understand my personality and, and also just kind of wanted to know why am I feeling this way to put, make sense of what I was going through. Um, so I remember I was taking a lot of these assessments. Um, as a coach, you know, I started to realize that all these assessments has a purpose and their purpose is really to discover, you know, more about who we are, identify and discovering who we are so that we, we understand how we 
show up in to our situation and how what choices do we have in front of us so i would highly encourage everyone to go to rowan's website um again it's at rei consulting rel rel consultants.com consultants.com i will have this in the episode notes so that everyone will have an opportunity to go check it out and try out that assessment hey you never know <laughs> Right, Rowan? Yeah, yeah. I, I'd love to meet anyone that's interested in the Enneagram and, and it is excited and it come to that place in your life where you just, I, I just, I'm tired of this garbage happening in my life and I'm ready to make the, whatever changes I need to make. And I think you'll find with any good coach, and I know with Michelle too, is that we create the safe environment for you to do this work. And just reminder, you have to do the work. We're here to guide you, encourage you, support you, but you have to do the work. And there's nothing magical about this, but it's when you put that effort in, it can really change your life. And I can attest it's changed my life. And I get the impression it's changed Michelle's life too. Coaching. Absolutely. I, I feel at this point, we're becoming a minister preaching, <laughs> preaching <laughs> how beautiful these tools are. And, you know, it may not sound very convincing until someone actually take that first step and try it. So I, yeah. we can preach all day long I until know. someone to actually take that action. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, is there anything that you would like to leave the audience with? Maybe um, a word of advice. I know we don't do advice, but maybe in a one, uh, one sentence, go ahead. I just, the one thing I would say, especially in this chaotic times we're facing with political instability, um, COVID stuff, is just be gentle with yourself and and really pay attention to listening to your you remember you have three brains you have your brain and your your sensations you have your heart brain that and you have your head brain especially when it's quiet so you have all the resources within you and please don't be afraid to get help there's no shame in getting help it's a sign of strength not weakness yeah I love what you just said. It, it's about having that vulnerability to show up in the world and you know what, I need help. And there's nothing wrong with asking for help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Roland, for coming again. Thank you, Michelle. Guest. It's a privilege to be on your program. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for tuning in and watching this live coffee talk show. I air every Wednesday at eight o'clock Pacific time. This is where I bring you love, courage, and connection. Hopefully you have learned something very valuable using the tool and understanding who you are with that vulnerability to navigate through some challenging time that we are experiencing right now. So join me again next week at Wednesday coffee talk at eight o'clock Pacific time. And I will see you then. Bye.